and welcome to how to play for Terminator Dark Fate, the card game. The way you win is by dealing enough damage to the Rev-9 to stagger it and then destroy it. Uh, the way you lose is by uh, the Rev-9 adding in enough wound cards into your deck to kill you. So, I'm going to go through some of the components of the game, then we can go through setup, an example turn, and uh, that should be enough to get you started in the world of Terminator Dark Fate. So, here we have a character card. Uh, these can be recognised by their square shape. Each character card has a title, card text, and a starting card that uh, you start your game with. Uh, then we have the Rev9 card, so each game will only have one of these. Uh, it can be denoted by its lack of a border at the top, uh, its title, uh, it has a keyword Rev9 down there, has some card text as well. Uh, then it has these two unique values, which are its hunt value and its stagger value. Uh, its hunt value is used in the hunt phase to deal damage to you, and its stagger value is uh, basically how tough it is, how easy it is to, uh, to stagger. Next we have wound cards. Uh, wound cards can be recognised by their red text saying wound at the top. Next we have starter cards. These are the cards that uh, you will start with in your deck. There are uh, cards that are shared between all players such as setback. There are also unique cards that each player starts with uh, that can't be bought throughout the game but you start with uh, sort of a special ability depending on your character. Um, these can be recognised by the yellow bar band across the bottom uh, that says Starter. All of the other cards in the game are Fate cards of uh, different types. Uh, here we have a Resource and a Munition card, um, which have text at the top. Uh, you'll see also that they have symbols on the left-hand side. There are two types of symbols in this game. There are supply symbols, which are used to buy new weapons, new munitions, and there are fight symbols, which are used to weaken the Terminator and fight him off. Uh, in the bottom right-hand side of most cards, we have a cost, which is used to buy the card, and uh, many cards also have game effects uh, in text as well. Here we have two more cards, uh, an action card and a skill card, uh, very much the same with um, uh, title, card picture, text and cost at the bottom. The final two cards are also fake cards but they're a little bit different. Here we have location cards and hostile cards and um, these can be recognised by their green, green border as the hostile cards can be recognised by their red border. The last component is uh, very important, the damage tokens, which are placed onto the Terminator when it takes damage. Uh, these are used to note how much damage the Terminator has taken. Uh, red is worth one, and black is worth five. Next, we need to set up the game. To set up for a game of Terminator Dark Fate, we first separate the t components out into character cards, starter cards, wound cards, Fate cards and Rev9 cards. Then we each pick a character. So one character for each player. Uh, let's pick Danny Ramos for this scenario. Any unchosen character cards are taken out of the game. Then we make our starting decks. Every starting deck has five prep cards, five, four setback cards and a special card that depends on the character chosen. So Danny Ramos's starter card is Resolve. Any remaining starter cards are removed from the game. Then we give that deck a bit of a shuffle and place it adjacent to our character card and our personal deck is complete. Next, we take all of the wound cards, place them in a stack within reach of all players. This is the wound deck. The fate deck is all remaining cards. These are shuffled together. I've shuffled this one earlier. And we draw the top five cards to form the reserve. Uh, next, we must choose a version of the Rev-9 to fight. So this will determine the difficulty of the game. Um, 
for your first game, we suggest fighting the damaged Endo. It's a little bit easier, a little bit uh, easier to take down. The other Rev9 cards are removed from the game. We take the chosen Rev9 card and the top five cards, three, two, three, four, five, from the Fate deck, shuffle them together. So you could be in any one of these six cards, including him. And place that back on top of the Fate deck. So he is somewhere in the top six cards of the deck. Each player then draws five cards from their personal deck to form a hand. We choose a player randomly and we are ready to begin. Terminator Dark Fate is a game that takes place over several turns, starting with the first player and continuing clockwise until either the players have been killed or the Terminator has been destroyed. Each turn uh, follows three phases, the play phase, the reserve phase and the hunt phase. During the play phase, players will, or the player, the current player, will look through their hand and then they will choose to either play cards or rest, uh, which allows them to destroy one card out of their hand, uh, potentially a terrible wound or perhaps a setback. So with this hand, we've got a pretty good hand here, so I think we're going to, uh, going to play it. When playing your hand, uh, you may choose any number of cards and uh, play them. So when playing a card, uh, you must be able to complete the text on the uh, the bottom of the card. This card, Resolve, allows me to discard any number of cards, then draw an equal number of cards. So in that case, I might discard this setback, draw a new card. That's another setback, so not very useful. Uh, and then place that in front of me. This card also, you can see, uh, gives me two fight. There's two fight symbols, uh, which will be useful later in the turn. Uh, this setback doesn't do anything for me, useless card, uh, but these three preps, uh, similar to the fight symbols, will give me uh, supply symbols which can be used to buy cards. At any point during your turn, you can spend fight or supply on the cards in front of you. So here we have three supply and two fight. Supply can be used to buy cards, so we have three supply and uh, this spare change costs it costs zero, taking initiative costs three, the assault rifle costs four, and the shotgun costs uh, four as well. So we can buy, in this scenario, spare change and taking initiative. Whenever you buy a card, you may take the card and place it in any player's deck. So a really powerful tactic in this game is buying cards for other players uh, to make their decks uh, work better. It's a completely cooperative game, so there's no need to be selfish. Uh, in this scenario, however, Danny Ramos is going to buy those cards for herself. Then we have the two fight. So fight can be used to place damage counters onto uh, either hostile or terminator cards. So hostile cards are the ones with a red border, as you can see here. So we can place two fight onto that hostile card. If a hostile card has fight equal to or greater than its resistance, the number in the bottom right, then it is destroyed. Uh, whenever a hostile card is destroyed, it is, instead of being removed from the game, placed on the bottom of the fate deck. This will mean the fate deck will eventually fill up with hostile cards and you're going to have a very hard time as the Terminator destroys you. At the end of the play phase, all of the cards that you played as well as any still in your hand, are discarded, and a new, new hand of cards is drawn up to five cards. Then we go to the reserve phase. During the reserve phase, we draw cards up till there are four cards in the reserve. Uh, once there are four cards in the reserve, we draw one extra card. So most times that will mean that there will be five cards in the reserve for the next player to choose from. However, if any of those cards are the Terminator, then the Terminator is revealed on the hunt and the reserves phase ends immediately. If the Terminator had not been revealed, then you could opt to uh, keep revealing cards until you decide to stop or reveal the Terminator. This can be a good tactic later in the game when you are powerful and trying to hunt down the Terminator. Uh, if you have a trap that you want to spring next turn, uh, and he's nowhere to be found, 
But early in the game, it is suggested that you do not reveal extra cards unless you're forced to. Which brings us to the hunt phase. If the Terminator has not been re revealed, and therefore is not on the hunt, this phase is completely ignored, skipped, and you go straight to the next player. However, in this case, the Terminator has been revealed, which means that the hunt phase does indeed take effect. When resolving the hunt phase, you have a couple of options. Uh, if the Terminator has damage on him, uh, then you may choose to flee. Fleeing means that you take the, remove the damage from the Terminator and shuffle him, uh, take an equal number of cards from the top of the Fate deck. So in this case, if he'd had two damage, you'd take two cards from the top of the Fate deck, take those, shuffle him in, give him a good shuffle, and place them back on top of the Fate deck. Uh, in that case, you have avoided the Terminator for another turn, and it's someone else's problem coming around the, uh, the table. However, if he has no damage on him, or if you choose not to, uh, not to flee, then he will hunt. When the Terminator hunts, we take a look at the hunt value at the bottom left-hand side of his card. Uh, this Terminator has a hunt value of 4, and we activate that many cards. Uh, in a particular order. First, we look to the reserves, uh, and if there are any hostile cards in the reserves, in this case there is one, uh, it is activated. So this hostile card says that uh, it's an attack and it wounds the current player. After, it's been after a hostile card has been activated, it is placed to the bottom of the deck. Wounding a player consists of taking a wound card and placing it into that player's discard pile. Wound cards are completely useless, except for the fact that if you have three of them in your hand at any one time, doesn't matter how many are in your discard, but in your hand, then you are dead and completely out of the game. If there are no hostile cards in the reserves, then you continue the hunt through the Fate deck by revealing the next card. So we've hunted one card, we reveal the next card. If it is a fake card that is not a hostile card or a location, it is simply destroyed, removed from the game, and will never be seen again. Uh, so that's an action card and that would do something very similar. Uh, and here we have a location card. If this had been a hostile card, then it would activate, be placed on the bottom of the deck, much like the hostile card activated from the reserves. Uh, since it's a location card, it is simply taken to the bottom of the deck. So. Location and hostile cards cannot be destroyed. If they are ever destroyed, they are placed to the bottom of the deck. Other cards can be taken out, and uh, if they're destroyed, they are removed from the game completely. What this means is that right at the end of the game, you're going to have a deck that is completely hostile and location cards, um, which is usually the point at which the end of the game where you will very quickly either die or win. After the hunt phase has been completed, uh, play continues with the next player. There are also a few special abilities that are good to keep in mind as you play the game. So that's been a very quick run through of how to play Terminator Dark Fate the card game. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and if you have any questions please do contact us and let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. If you'd like to learn more you can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. You can also like and subscribe to be told when we've released new videos.